Hey everybody, I unfortunately don't have a building project in this video, but a unbuilding project later. What? Later? I want to see that now. Let's see. Updates, 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 updates. Unbuilding. Let's go from updates. here. Updates. So let's do the unbuilding as mentioned in the video. Hmm. But this update section is actually really long. I don't want to miss that. Eh, let's just watch the whole video. And also a whole lot of updates because as I read from the comments, many of you wonder why the hell don't I upload more videos? Many reasons, of course, but lots of stuff has happened, is happening and will happen off camera at the moment. Not interesting for a video, but I wanted to give you some updates now and also some of my ideas for future projects and projects that definitely will happen. First of all, why I don't have that much time for big projects at the moment, I will be moving. My sister is moving at the moment and friends will also move soon and I will help everywhere, of course. That takes up time, so less shop time. That's how it is. At least the shop won't move. It will stay where it is for now. And that's very good because that would be an awful lot of work. Then already a possible future project. The workbench is a complete mess. Just ignore it. But on there is also this little gem here, a Omia Universa table saw. I got this from my grandpa and this is not only a table saw because with these two tables it can also be a jointer when they are mounted instead of the table saw table. Pretty cool, very old machine from the 1960s I think. It needs some restoration and some repairs but this could be a really cool machine again and I think it's interesting taking it apart, showing how everything works and making this into a project video. On the saw you can also see this little battery powered random orbit sander from Bosch and I need to do another sponsored video with Bosch this year. It will be a floating shelf where I have a pretty simple DIY mounting solution in mind and it also needs a sponsored part in it with the sander and some sandpaper. But this then will be the last sponsored project I'll do with Bosch. Getting free tools and some payment is nice but actually not worth it for me. Too much loss of my authenticity that I really care about. Back to the saw I got from my grandpa. I'll also get a drill press from him to replace this one with. About the same size, better construction and as well I could make a video about restoring it, upgrading it, stuff like that. We'll see. Then I have another upgrade for my jointer planer in mind. A couple years ago I made a few videos about upgrading its cutter head with this spiral one and in that I then also had to replace the infeed roller with this knurled one. Details about that are in the video linked right here. The outfeed roller is the original one but the infeed roller now is not ideal. It slips from time to time because debris quickly clogs it up and then it has not really good grip on the wood. And then a problem that goes along with that is the thickness table being relatively short. I want it a lot longer and if you look at the machine it could be from right up here to there and right now it's only as long as the machine base and that could be another pretty interesting project. Another possible future project is a new cyclone for my shop vac. Currently it's this one that I've built before I started making videos about eight years ago and it works great. It's actually built from a street cone and as you can see back then my uh, silicone application skills were very good. All solid construction here as you can oh yep it works great. The separation is perfect, but I hate this being two units. I would like this to be integrated somewhere in here. I've built something similar in the past for a smaller shop bag that I use with my Panther router. There's a video about that. And I would like to do something similar for this one, except adding more features like a auto on feature when I turn on a tool, power through the hose or along the hose and a switch at this part here to turn it on. That would be so nice. That would make better use of this space and also look nicer. Let me know what you think about it. Then an update on my latest project, the homemade latch with door handle for my sliding shop door. I love this. It's so much better than before. But I got a lot of comments from people asking why I didn't use magnets to do the same thing. But the comments I got were all like, you could have used magnets and saved so much time why do it so complicated? Why are you so stupid? Use magnets. Why over engineered? All like that, as usual. But nobody really had experience with using magnets for such a door. 
everybody just says they think magnets work and are easier. Let me show you why I think magnets won't work here and are not a good idea. I'm keeping the latch open with this clamp and when I usually close the door it's about with this speed and force. And this is a pretty significant bouncing back. With this door sheet weighing maybe 20 kilograms, you really think small magnets could hold that? I don't think so. You could of course add more and more magnets until it works, but then when it's finally closed and you want to open it again, you have to overcome all that force and that will be a pain. I want it to be easy to open like this with a finger. Another problem with magnets, especially multiple ones, how would you attach them securely in the door? You would have to glue all of them in place. I wouldn't really trust that over time for this application. But the bigger problem is aligning all of them to each other so they all make contact at the same time. That's really critical. There are these screw in type magnets that would make the mounting easy with just a screw. <laughs> but the stupid thing about these is if you screw one to one side and one to the other, they oppose each other. There are of course also magnets designed for such applications, like the one I have for my router cabinet. The magnet is a bit free floating, so alignment is no issue. And on the other side there's a metal plate. And that works pretty well and feels like a lot of force. But when I do that a little harder, it bounces back. And that little piece of plywood weighs like, I don't know, 300 grams? That's nothing compared to the big sheet of wood for the door. I think these are enough reasons, but please prove me wrong. If you have experience or installed this somewhere yourself, email me with pictures or video and show me how it works. I would really like to see that working, but I don't think it works for me. But now let's go through the second part of the workshop where actually a lot more is going on. And I conveniently already turn on the light. In here is, as you can see, pure chaos and a lot of change. The CNC is on its side again on the lifting table and everything else is just a mess. Once everything is done here, all of this here should be open space to assemble stuff and just have a lot of free space. Before all of that change, the CNC was about sitting where I am standing right now and here was a pool table actually with a piece of wood as a cover on it. But that pool table is now gone, it would have never been played on again. It was basically just in the way. The CNC will get its own stand and its new home will be somewhere underneath the wood shelf here in the corner. And I'm thinking about mounting it or making the stand relatively low so that the work surface of the CNC is about at the height of this here right now, the pantrouter cart. That's very low then. I'm not sure yet. I would ask if anybody has experience with a CNC bed being really low, is that a bad idea or doesn't it really matter? Let me know in the comments. Next future project that I'm actually working on right now, besides all of that crap there, is also an upgrade for the CNC router and if it works as intended, it will be quite a game changer because it's an automatic tool changer. Here it is and the way it works, this is pneumatically activated and when I put pressure on it, it will release this tool holder and I can pick up another tool when releasing the pressure. Integrating that into the machine will be a challenge because my controller only has one more output that I can use and that I need to use for the pneumatics that activates the tool change. But this changer has no sensor that tells it if a tool is in it or not. And if a tool change was unsuccessful, it would just crash the tool holders into each other and then stuff breaks. That must not happen. And then I need a tool rack where all the tools are stored and ready for the machine to pick up if needed. But at the same time, I don't want to waste a lot of work area space on the machine for that tool rack. So ideally it's movable. Without any more controllable outputs, that's not a challenge. I have solutions for both problems in mind, but more on that then on a project video. So I hope you look forward to that as much as I do. Then I've already purchased some cheap linear rails for a future homemade machine that I will make when the tool changer is done. As I mentioned in the beginning, I'm moving soon and so there will also probably be some furniture projects, but I'm not sure how much of them I will record. But I think now it's also enough of 
project announcements and updates. So let's do the unbuilding as mentioned in the beginning. And it will be this year, my homemade drum and thickness sander, the first homemade machine I built. It's a bit hard to say goodbye to it, but the reality is it sits here for like two or three years unused and collects dust instead of creating it. It would work, but I just don't use it anymore. So it has to go and make space for new stuff. On the top you could sand by passing it over the drum while it's spinning. I did it a couple times with cutting boards and showed that. And underneath you can pass it through and sand it to thickness. Here's a crank for raising and lowering the lower table. I show the mechanism in a second. And this is the on off switch which is basically just a simple switch. And this flap here turns it off when you press on it with a knee. You can lift the upper table up to get access to the drum. There are also the ports for dust collection with a shop back. It's basically a wooden channel and here are many little holes where the dust gets sucked in. That actually worked surprisingly well. Same on the other side but a bit lower for the lower table. Here are leveling screws for the table and actually washers where it sits on. There's a lot of cutout for the belt drive and springs that should keep the table up but actually don't really do anything. The sandpaper is attached to the drum with hook and loop. That worked pretty well. Let's turn it on one more time. It's actually really quiet. The motor that drives it is a used pull pump motor that I got from eBay for about 10 euros. It has like 800 watts which is way underpowered for this size drum. The belt, you don't really see it, but it's way under tensioned. But the rest seems to run pretty true still. But a really big problem that came over the years is the drum is built out of discs of MDF, which is a terrible idea because it expanded over time and it got to a point where it jammed itself in the frame and you couldn't turn it. Right now, in winter, when it's dry inside, it's a little bit better. But there was about a five millimeter gap on this end. And this end, when I built it, this is now like two millimeters. Same on this side. So it's not good anymore. With the front fabric removed, you can see the mechanism for raising and lowering the thickness table. There is a threaded rod that pushes or pulls on this board here which is guided with these pieces in this kind of track sliding on cork flooring because why not? And then there is a link here, a link attached to the frame and that then does the raising and lowering. The stability is great as you can see. Works like a charm. I think you get the idea. Do I have to mention that I barely used the thickness table? I don't know why, it's working so well, butter smooth. Running the motor cable straight over that mechanism, just hanging loosely right there is also a good idea, isn't it? Also, while wiring up this switch here was the first and only time I got shocked by mains voltage because I forgot to unplug the cord. How stupid can someone be? It wasn't really a shock, fortunately. I only felt a little tickle, but Man, that was a lesson. Oh yeah, back when I built this, I didn't know how to use any 3D software. I built all of this straight out of my mind with some inspiration I got from other homemade drum sanders and videos on YouTube. For example, the raising mechanism is rather copied by his dumpy nubs. But the rest I just put together like what felt correct and I didn't really care about whatever. It worked, it got the job done and I was pretty happy when it was done. Today my standards are a bit different. Ah, bearing blocks out of wood and sandpaper. Great combination. And double bearing on this end because reasons. They had space in there. Wooden pulleys of course. Originally this had a chain drive on it made from an old bicycle chain and some sprockets. There actually is a video about that. Look at that. I used anchors in the MDF drum for the pulley. Why? 
Here's another look at the motor, which is actually inside this plastic housing, but it needs the housing for cooling air. And I thought to attach it, why not make a plywood piece that is exactly the shape of this plastic flange right here. A bit complicated, but I thought, hey, let's have some fun at the scroll saw. And now everything left is this empty angled box that this whole project started with the sanding drum and a whole bunch of wooden parts. The machine is gone, but the room is far from being finished. However, there already is a lot more space available in here, which is great. Here already is the material for the floating shelf I was talking about. Nice solid piece of maple. And I guess that wraps up this little update video. Oh yeah, out of all the possible future projects, which one is the most interesting to you? Please let me know in the comments. It's always good to know.